everyone, Coach K here. Today we're going to talk about the Mew, the old one and the new one, and we're going to compare them and look at the similarities and differences. And if you felt like, oh no, I have to use this new Mew because they're going to force me to, that's okay after the end of this video, which will be only five to seven minutes, so stick around. You'll feel really comfortable. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video for others because it will be educational and helpful and won't be too long. So let's jump right in and talk about the new look of my Ether Wallet. Here's what it looks like now, and here's what it looked like before. We would go through all these, but let's just close this down. This is what it looked like before. So a little bit of an improvement if you'd ask me. It looks a little nicer. We had all the stuff we needed all in one place before, which was kind of nice, but I'll show you how it's a little bit different and why it might be better. The new Mew is actually created so that you can use your Mew Connect on your phone, similar to how Trust Wallet works with the Binance uh, Dex. So you can connect directly to it and it's really easy to use. You can still use your key store file and your monomic phrase. Don't feel like you can't do that. And you can do it the same way as you used to. So all of that's still the same. You can create new wallets very easily. To access your other wallet, no problem. The difference is here, nothing. Here you can access your wallets. You could also create a new one, no problem. As we go to accessing my new wallet, we have your Mew Connect right from your phone you can connect to it. You can use your cold storage wallets to connect to it, your MetaMask, as well as your key store, private key, and monomic phrases. No different except for here, there was all of that in one place and they're kind of jumbled all together and it might have been a little bit confusing for a new user. This is a little bit more aesthetically nice to touch and play with. Here you would just click on that, click on Trezor, open it, you'd unlock your Trezor and it would open the same way as I'm going to show you right now for my Ether Wallet. You click on access your wallet and it will pop up like this. Here's what it used to look like if you connected to your MetaMask before. It would pop up like this. You still have all the same stuff up top. I'm going to show you the little differences that we have here on the side. But overall, it's pretty much the same thing. But before we had to kind of copy this phrase, it was kind of a pain. Here we can just copy the access on the QR code. If we wanted to scan it, we can copy it. We can also make a really nice private key print out there, which is pretty cool. And I'm just using a test account. So if you saw my private key, don't worry about it. Hit up uh, your balance. So we'll show you what it is in Bitcoin and Augur. And all your coins on the right side here, similar to how we used to have it on this side. You'd click on show your tokens and have them all load up. If you didn't see it, you click on add a token, put the contract address, token symbol, and save it. And that would actually have popped up for you. The things that were changing are very pretty much nothing same thing over here as well as if I want to find a token let's say I had air swap I can find air swap token click on load and it will show me my number of air swap tokens pretty straightforward right to send a transaction no problem you go here the same way as we used to go here to send put the address the amount of ETH uh, and your gas limit etc the gas limit kind of was confusing for a lot of people so this is nice it does it all for you. You basically pick how fast you want your transaction to go through. It will, it will charge it for you. And it's kind of more automatic. You'd select it and send. No, that's pretty much most of it. Your transaction history, you could click here and you would open up Etherscan, same as you have here. Again, very, very similar stuff. You could send an offline transaction this way. Um, so could you here as well? It just looks a little bit nicer to do, right? Here is a little bit more, um, I find it a little bit more aesthetic and more of a better user interface, user experience. And this one, just many people feel a little bit daunted by learning a new thing um, that they were really comfortable with using before. Here we have, uh, you could switch up funds. So if you wanted to, let's say do 0.05 ETH and switch it up for, I don't know, ADA, You'd be able to do that, but I don't have a ton of ETH in this account, so I am not going to do that because there's no point. But you could do this and check, check off the box that you want and continue and swap it. I don't suggest doing that. It usually is quite a high fee doing it this way. Here we have the ENS subdomain. You have a safe send ETH transaction, so kind of protecting and securing your ETH 
in a safe transaction, making sure that you get what you're what you're supposed to get, etc. So it kind of locked those transactions, which are good because scammers always try to get you. And then you have the scheduling a transaction. Let's say if you want to pay for um, something, you you agree to pay an influencer to do a video, or you agree to pay someone in Ethereum for whatever reason. You could schedule that transaction to pay on the you know the first and the fifth fifteenth uh, of every month, something like that. And you can collateralize your ETH with MakerDAO just by clicking on that, and it will load up for you. I'm not going to show you how to do all that in this video because it's meant to be just a walkthrough, but you can do all of that very easily right here. And if we go back, we can make a contract. So that's really easy. Interact with the contract. If you were, if you worked with a project or anything like that, you can interact with the, co the project, whatever you had here, you would put in your contract address, you put in the JSON interface and it would unlock your contract. Um, you can deploy a new smart contract from here and sign a message. So that's basically all of it all there. And it's very much all the same here. Contracts, you choose it. Uh, domain name, you can choose it. And ENS, you could choose it and create it. Um, you could check a TX on the hash, uh, TX hash on the blockchain very easily. View your wallet info and uh, click help if you need help. This is very much the same. If uh, if you have any issues with it, you know you go to frequently asked questions and you interact directly with the help center if you have any issues. And that's basically really it. So in this last seven minute video, I've kind of gone over the differences and how this, they're really also really much, uh, very much the same, just a little bit more of a nice user experience, user interface with uh, the new one. And it wants you really to, they really did this upgrade so that you could connect with Mew, connect on your phone quite easily with the, with their website, platform, blockchain, et cetera. So that's basically it. If you have any questions, you like this video, et cetera, don't forget to leave a comment at the below uh, in the box. And if you haven't used Mew Connect, there'll be links down there for you as well as don't forget to join the Athena education community, subscribe, like this video if you did, and I'll see you guys soon. Have yourselves a great day. Coach K signing out. This was how you use the new Mew.